bringing you news and information from around the Pacific Command. This is your AFN Pacific Report. Thanks for joining us on this edition of AFN Pacific Report. I'm Senior Airman Therese Garnier. During a press conference at the Pentagon, the commander of U.S. Pacific Command said he wouldn't be surprised if North Korea undertook more provocative actions. But Admiral Sam Locklear says if North Korea is hoping to restart negotiations with the United States, they must commit to getting rid of nuclear weapons. Where we are today, with the, I believe, with North Korea is that will there be another provocation? Uh, I, I don't have a crystal ball on that. History would say that there, there would likely be one. Uh, but the Clearly, the position, I think, for uh, all countries in the region, and certainly our country, is that, uh, you know, the, the North Korea must be committed to the total denuclearization and it would complete and verify by a viable plan to do that. Uh, and that's kind of the bottom line entry of, of how you would get into a, a broader set of negotiations with, with North Korea at this time. Learning to provide various services at a reduced cost is a hot topic for any military command around the Pacific, especially when it comes to providing supplies. The Logistics Center at Yokosuka Naval Base is learning new and improved ways to keep themselves and their customers under budget. Fleet Logistics Center Yokosuka hosted members of the Japanese Society for Quality Control to share ideas on how to enhance the business end of logistics through a program called Continuous Process Improvement, or CPI. Every time when invited Japanese commercial industry people, uh, this is great benefit for us because they are doing cutting edge kind of stuff and their level is way higher than we are doing right now. So based on that, we can learn a lot from them. CPI is an in-depth, multi-layered process that could take hours to explain. But what it all boils down to is smoother logistics management. CPI is integral especially in this environment of uh, fiscal austerity and sequestration. I think that the, the, you know, the better quality service we can provide to, to the warfighter with uh, reduced costs is uh, a win-win for everybody. During the visit, the Japanese took a tour of FLC Yokosuka's warehouse facilities to meet the people who get the products from point A to the customers at point B. We can interact from, uh, to the Japanese commercial industry guys. And also, we can provide them a new way of improvement method. So this is great. We can learn from them, and we also can teach something for them. So this is a great opportunity, I believe. With input learned on both sides, they will take these ideas and keep improving on it for everyone's benefit. Petty Officer Brian M. Brooks, Yokosuka Naval Base, Japan. A former service member who knows all too well what it is to sacrifice for his country brought his inspirational message to Okinawa. Brian Anderson is an adventure seeker. He pushes the limits of what some may think he is not capable of doing. That's because in Iraq on October 23, 2005, he went through a tragedy that changed his life. And to give you an idea of what it was like, there was about 60 IEDs going off a day in that six-mile radius. Brian Anderson is a triple amputee. No turning back. A book he wrote about his personal story of recovery and how he overcame one of the toughest challenges by not just surviving, but by thriving. And I have a great life. I have so much fun. I've accomplished so many things. And I get to help people along the way. And, you know, a lot of people look at me in a wheelchair and say, oh, that sucks to be in a wheelchair. I look at it as being, you know, skateboarding 24-7. He visited Okinawa to share his story and to let people know that anything, no matter how tough, can be overcome. Marine Corporal Michael Lopez, Kadena Air Base, Japan. Power plants are going offline across the Korean Peninsula, which means U.S. military installations need to step up their energy conservation efforts. This summer just got a bit hotter. With some of Korea's power plants going offline, the peninsula will face blackouts during the summer. Three power plants are going to be out of offline. Those blackouts are just going to take sections of the peninsula, specific areas, out of power for a certain time so they don't affect everybody at the same time. During this downtime, the power company will be working with the military so bases won't be affected. What we're trying to prevent is the installation, the uh, army bases to be affected, and that's what we, we're concerned on. Although military bases will not be affected, the installations are still helping out by lowering their energy consumption. They can uh, buy more efficient lighting. Um, they can uh, 
reduce the amount of the use of the ACs and furnace, and they can uh, change their habit. Specialist Sarah Herring, Seoul, Korea. For more than 70 years, the USO has been providing service members and their families a home away from home. And that home at Osan Air Base just got an upgrade. Thanks to the USO, over 28,000 military members serving in Korea get to call this place home. I expect that this new USO location in Osan will serve some 4,000 troops and family members every single month. That's 4,000 troops and family members who know that uh, the USO is there for them, but more importantly, they know that America is saying thank you. Osan Air Base leadership welcomes this new facility and looks forward to future growth in the program. This is a, a, a wonderful location, and we are going to build this USO and, and the traffic that goes through here. Uh, but we look forward to one day to having a, a larger facility where we can host even more of uh, America's servicemen and women. This uh, USO facility is in some ways unique. It is the only one we have on an airbase in Korea. And uh, this is their USO home right here at, uh, at Osan Air Base. And a simple cut of the ribbon makes it official. Senior Airman Michael Watkins, Osan Air Base, Korea. Coming up, partying at the DMZ. But first, let's take a look around the Pacific Command in today's snapshots. Marine amphibious assault vehicles disembarked from USS Germantown during exercise Talisman Sabre 2013 in Australia. Airmen install an ammunition drum into an F-16 Fighting Falcon at Eielson Air Force Base, Alaska. A sailor performs for students at a community service event during Pacific Partnership 2013 on the island of Tarwa. And that's a look around the Pacific Command in today's Snapshots. Duty on the front line can certainly be stressful, which probably explains the exuberance demonstrated by soldiers on the DMZ who had the chance to celebrate a historic ceasefire. Stretching across the Korean Peninsula is the 160 mile long DMZ, or Demilitarized Zone, as part of the Armistice Agreement. About 100 U.S. and Iraq soldiers along with Korean nationals commemorate the ceasefire with the second annual Freedom Victory Celebration at Camp Boniface. This event is a warm welcome for one newcomer. He says the best part is... Just being outside, not working, just having a good time, fun time. Although water gun fights and dance performances are fun, this Louisiana native understands why interacting with the local Korean community is important. It shows what we're here for. And it shows, the, it shows the rest of the country what we're here for. Benedetto's leadership feels the same way. It reminds me of all those that came here before and all the sacrifices that they went through and to know that there are good soldiers continuing that tradition on and improving on it. For these soldiers stationed on freedom's final frontier, this is great for their morale. If we don't get a slice of what we're doing this for, then we kind of start to forget. So it's important to have these events so we remember. Army Sergeant Tan Pham, Camp Boniface, Korea. Striking kicks, heavy blows, and stepping toe to toe with raised fists aren't necessarily acts of violence. In fact, Army Sergeant Keith Burghardt learned how the art of fighting helped bring two nations closer. Stones smashed to dust. Wooden boards shattered to pieces, and war cries filled the air at USAG Yongsun. Black Bell, Yoon Sil Kwok, along with other young martial artists from around Korea, hit the map. Today we just gathered um, a lot of the Korean Hapkido Taekwondo Kamdo teams and brought them out here together and had a competition. Judges raised scorecards while sparring yeah. and demonstrations captured the spectators. But the exhibition's impact left a mark. It's a good way to see the different parts of how we all train together and see. I think it's really good. I think it brings us together because it's practicing, constant practicing together and uniting and stuff like that. I think it went really well. As hectic as it seems, I think it went really well. President of the International Police Martial Arts Federation understood the driving force behind the event. The U.S. and uh, Korea the relationship is very strong now. Army Sergeant Keith Burkhart, Yongsan, Korea. 
We wrap up this newscast with a story of a rescue. But what's being rescued is not human. However, it is endangered. In our bustling and fast-paced world, sometimes you need to just stop and smell the roses, or in this case, the golden orchids. These are an endangered species of orchid protected by the Japanese government. Recent tree removal due to flood obstruction made the current habitat for the plants unsuitable. An environmental management team from the 374 Civil Engineer Squadron surveyed the local area to find them a new home. They selected Tama Hills due to its cool and shady climate. Mr. Albert Bancroft, golf course superintendent, explains Tama Hills Golf Course Environmental Management Plan. The golf course environmental management plan is uh, how we manage our maintenance activities that interact with the uh, threatened or endangered species out on the golf course. Uh, yeah, the point being that we don't disturb anything or damage any rare species. But the rare orchids won't just be protected from routine maintenance operations. Uh, anything we find, like these plants uh, specifically, will have signs that will say environmentally sensitive area, don't enter. We will uh, do what's called red stank it, which uh, lets the golfers know this is an area that you don't enter. A total of 80 golden orchids are being replanted in the new environment. Reporting from Yakota Air Base, Japan, I'm Airman First Class, Brianne Schornhorst. That's it for this newscast. From all of us here at AFM Pacific, thanks for watching.